blue Dilly dilly Lavender green If I were king Dilly dilly I'd need a queen Hi We've asked, been asked by quite a few people about buying a dog and where to find one and what to look for and things such as that so I've I think it's probably be quite informative to just have a little think about that because when you buy a dog you're going to have a friend there for life but that friend is going to <laughs> to live for oh, you know, 12 13 years maybe even maybe even longer so you want to make sure you've picked a companion you're going to get on with because otherwise you know what they say you know um, friends light up the room some when they come and some when they go and you don't want to end up with a dog that you've got problems with so it's well worth taking time to think about it really carefully and to select one that fits in with you and with your family so I think the first question I've got a little crib sheet here to help me is, is to think about why you want a dog now give it some serious thought. It sounds very sort of trite and it sounds sort of, well, it, I want a dog because I want a dog. But do have, do have a little think about it because this will help you decide the type of dog you want. Do you want a dog for companionship, like this one who's trying to escape? Uh, do you want a dog to go running with, you know, exercise companion? Or do you want a dog because you want to join in some different activities, you know, like walking with friends up the woods or whatever? Uh, maybe you want one because you've got children and the children are pestering because they would like a dog and, and great companions and friends they make or you want to teach your children responsibilities um, if it's that if it's that you want to teach your kids responsibilities actually more likely you'll end up with the responsibility anyway so make sure it's something that you're happy with um, would you want one because maybe you know you live alone and or in, in an area where you'd like to know if there's anybody outside so a sort of watchdog type dog that, that will you know bark if there's anybody around um, things like that will help guide the type of dog you get uh, then you've got to think about the possible limitations on your choice of dog yeah, um, think about the other people in your home you know you've got children uh, uh, older people, you know, the health of people, their age and their fitness, all of these make a difference, you know, uh, a dog that uh, would, would fit into a family and, and love to go for long runs isn't necessarily the same type of dog that somebody else will need if they want, really want companionship but aren't very mobile. And there are dog, all sorts of dog breeds for all sorts of occasions. So. You know, it's not saying, right, you can't have one because of this. It's saying, pick the right breed. Um, there are things like other pets, if you've got other pets in the house. Some dog breeds are, are quite happy with other pets in the house. Um, and other dogs, you know, can be a right pest if you've got, you know, something else around. You know, like uh, some people have chickens and chickens are fine. They're lovely, <laughs> but some dogs will spend their entire time running around trying to get them, you know, for breakfast. So you have to be careful thinking about what pets have you got and how will the dog fit in with that. Uh, then your time limitations. How much time have you got for a dog? Because things, simple things like grooming, um, uh, ex the amount of exercise that your dog wants, all of those will make a difference to the breed of dog you pick. Uh, what's your working situation? If you work at home all the time, then you know you might want a different dog than if you maybe need to go out for a few hours. If you're working all day long, and you know there's nobody in the house for most of the day, then think really carefully whether a dog is really for you. There are things like you know dog sharing or. Um, you know, sort of going along and helping, you know, offering to walk someone's dog that can give you the little dog fix you need without necessarily taking on the full responsibility of one. But dogs are very, you know, sociable and they really need company. So if you, if you are going to be out all day long, think really hard because it's, it's not really fair on the dog. Um, what type of property have you got? You know, if you're make sure there are no restrictions on whether you can have a dog because if you look in the paper it's amazing how many people 
buy dogs and then find out that the landlord doesn't allow them or else there are some limitations in uh, you know on on your own flat even you know what type of dog you're allowed to have please still sit still it's a good girl um other th things uh, oh, like the size of your house i mean if you if you've uh, in a bed sit maybe you know st bernard's not the dog for you because by the time that sat on your, your sofa there's no room for you uh, so you've got to think you know just be practical about it and then think about those and also things like transport you know if you've got to take you will have to take your dog to the vet sometime or other even if it's only for routine things or to take it out for exercise how, how are you going to get it there if it's a short walk to the park or something that's fine and a short walk to the vets okay think about that think about practicalities also, you know, if you live up 15 flights of stairs and the lift's out of action and you've got a bulldog, that's an awful long way to carry a bulldog because it's not going to make 15 flights of steps, <laughs> trust me. Um, and then think about economics. You know, um, some dogs are a lot cheaper to keep than other dogs. You know, uh, for instance, a, a large dog, it's going to cost you more in vet's bills, more in routine health. Hello, sweet pea. Hello more in health I'm gonna let Dill go she's uh, desperate to get down and I bet she'll come back now right um, so those give you the sort of criteria or the things that you're going to be looking for when you're looking for a dog now you've got a list of those and you can start thinking well what does this mean now it'll it'll affect the size of the dog you're going to get um, as I said to you before the, all dogs cost money if you added it up probably it would sound horrendous how much it costs but it's like it that's all well, it's all in terms of finance but you get a huge amount back from the dog you get all that love back and you know you you cannot put a value on how much a dog can bring to a life uh, so you've got the cost of it the purchase price in a way that's a that's just a drop in the ocean because the main expenses come, you know, you've got um, just routine, routine health care. You've got vaccinations, worming, uh, flea treatments. Uh, there might be grooming costs depending on the type of dog you get. Um, you might have to pay for boarding and you go, if you go away. You might have to pay for somebody to walk your dog occasionally. And all of those sort of that tots up. So again, there are some dogs that it's much cheaper to keep than other dogs. So think about, think about that. Um, the, the type of dog you want, the amenability, you know, how well does that particular breed tend to get on with um, other pets in the house, with children, are they good with children? What are they like with strangers? Some breeds can be very aloof when it comes to strangers, you know, sort of, and don't tolerate people coming in the house very well at all because they're quite protective. Other dogs just love everyone and sometimes they can just face it, they can love them a bit too much. So, so bear that in mind as well. Um, and I mean, you, you can think in terms of the age and size of dog as well. Um, you've also got to think how that dog gets on with other dogs because it, it's, um, it's a mistake to think that all dogs like one another. They like people, you know. Some dogs just don't like other dogs. Some dogs don't like puppies, you know. So, and some dogs have a particular breed that they don't like. So, so you know, it's, again, more and more to think about, but think about it now before you make a mistake and get a dog that doesn't fit in with you. How vocal is the dog? Some dogs bark almost incessantly, and it's quite difficult to get them to stop because some breeds have been, you know, that's part of their breeding is that they become, you know, they, they use their voice a lot. You know, they talk a lot and they make a lot of noise because that's what was wanted from that particular breed. So look into the breed to find out what was the basic, what was it for? Uh, destructiveness, some, some, again, some dogs can be very destructive, others, you know, less so. Any dog can become destructive if it's not sort of not given enough attention, you know, they can have um, poor behaviour and, uh, you know, destructive dog, in, destructiveness in puppies is, is quite normal, but not to a great extent. 
um, how protective is the breed. You know, some breeds, again, have been bred especially to be protective. So um, they're, they're very person focused on one person and will look after that person. Um, so bear that in mind. Tendency to roam, you know, um, again, some dogs, you can leave the door open and they won't go anywhere. Other dogs, given half a chance, will shimmy up the fence and be, you know, 15 gardens away before you blink. So a tendency to roam is important to know about an activity level. If you want to go running every day, you know, you've seen the advert with the Dachshund on it. It really doesn't want to go jogging, does it, for, for that sort of distance. Whereas, if you want to go for long runs all the time, then something like a Dalmatian, which was bred as a coach dog, so it was actually used to run underneath coaches, you know, there were the horse and coach, um, then that dog will run all day long and, and still be there for more. Um, you know, do you want an intelligent dog? If, you've got, if you want lots to do lots of things with it, an intelligent dog might be right for you, but... Um, not everybody wants a really intelligent dog because they do tend to get into mischief if you're not exercising their brain. So, you know, you have to think about that. And um, coat maintenance. Uh, you've all seen Dill. Dill's got a curly coat and that needs a lot of maintenance. She needs to have it combed through carefully every day. If you leave it, she'll get knots in it. And if you get knots in the coat, it affects the skin underneath and it can, it can make a very, very unhappy dog. So, so you, you need to think about that. How long is it going to take you to do, you know? And it's a mistake to think that short-haired dogs don't need grooming because they do, but it's a simple brush through. So think about the coat maintenance. Also, if you're going to have to have it clipped, that's going to cost you quite a bit of money. Um, you can clip them yourself, um, you know, buy a set of clippers and clip them yourself. Let's face it, you know, even if, even if you have a disastrous clip so that it looks a bit strange it'll grow out do it again and then health issues every breed of dog has some associated health risks with that breed you know it's like some families have heart trouble in the family and some families have weak tummy trouble and things like that dog breeds are sort of much the same so look into the breed and find out what the health risks are. These days there are so many DNA tests for many of the congenital illnesses that you can actually get those screened before the dogs are mated and then your puppy will, you'll know that your puppy is not going to get one of those. Of course the next thing you know it'll cut itself on a fence and you'll end up with a vet's bill there but you won't get some of these dreadful illnesses that you see, that you hear about. So those are the sort of criteria you want to be looking for. Then I'll be king, dilly dilly, and you'll be my queen.